Hello and welcome to web learning where knowledge is shared. In today's tutorial I'll show you how to use the STM32Q programmer. The link to the STM32Q programmer you will find in the description below or you can search it in Google. So click on get software, accept, either fill in your information or log in or register if you already logged into MySD before. Save it anywhere you like. After the file has been downloaded click open, double click the STMQ programmer. If you get this arrow, just click more info and then run anyway. Okay, this application requires Java runtime. Let's install this. So it finished the installation. Let's continue. Let's reinstall the Q programmer. Again, more info, run anyway. I accept. Let's run the Q programmer. Let's connect a discovery board to the PC. You can see that it's not finding a ST-Link. If we'll do refresh here, it's finding the ST-Link. You can click here for firmware upgrade if the firmware of the ST-Link is too old. And then you need to click here, open in update mode then here if your discovery board doesn't have the full mass storage plus virtual com port you can change it upgrade it in my case this board doesn't have it so i'll click here then you can choose either just debug virtual com port or also with the mass storage and i can click update after doing a firmware upgrade, it's best to disconnect the USB and connect it back again. So, refresh again. Let's click connect. And you can see that we're connected at 4 kHz. The voltage is 2.87. That's the Estelink firmware. You can see the size of the flash and the address where it started. If we disconnect, the Q programmer has other features. You can connect uh, via UART, USB, or OTA. If you remember one of my videos, I did a ST-Link update using UART and USB. The Q programmer does everything. So now there is only one software that you, you need to use. So I'm still connected via ST-Link. So I can connect back again. But before I do, a few other things. You can connect more than one ST-Link at the same time. And this is where you decide on which one you want to connect to. You can do either port SWD or JTAG. This is the frequency speed that you're connecting to. This is the mode, either normal, hot plug or under reset. So hot plug is while if you want to connect the Q programmer while the program is still running, then you do hot plug or you can do it under reset. If there is one more than one address and the way you want to reset if you want a software reset or hardware reset then click connect again we can see all the addresses and this is the program that actually is on the flash other things that you can do here you can change the different addresses so you can write them for example i can go to a different address in the memory and see if there is any information let's go back to the base address I can click open file and then I can load a different binary file or hex file in order to program the, the device. This is the area where you write the device memory. Here on this tab you have erase and programming. So we can also program a file using this method. So I can click browse. It will do the same thing. Here in this one, I can change the start address of the program. So if I have more than one program in the flash, or if I want to put some other data in the flash in a different memory, I can use this one. I can do skip erase flash before programming. This is if I have two programs at the same time on the flash. The default of the Q programmer is to erase before writing the flash verify programming and run after programming so this will reset the board immediately after finishing the programming 
and then I can click start programming. Here I can do full chip erase, download the file and change the option bytes. On this tab I have the option bytes. I can either leave the microcontroller open with no issues and I can see all the flash or I can change it to BB so this will lock the flash and I won't be able to read it. CC will put the chip in production mode and the only way to change it is by replacing the chip itself. So let's leave it at AA. P0 protection, again, this is another way to protect the microcontroller. You can read more about it in the user manual. Brownout, this is brownout reset, BOR level. Whatever you set it here, any voltage under, under this voltage will reset the microcontroller. User configuration, you have the dual bank in some devices. So if you want to use a single or a dual bank, you have the hardware watchdog. You have the reset generate when entering stop mode or reset generated when entering standby mode. In this case, sometimes if you do a stop or standby, you will have a reset when exiting. And this will help you, if you see this, check these settings to see if you're getting a reset after, after exiting the stop or standby. Right protection, again, read more about this in the reference manual. This will lock different areas in the memory for write protection. This, if you want to see the registers of the CPU, you can run, hold, system reset, hardware reset, core reset, step, read core registers, like I'm doing it here, and then you can see what's going on if it's running. Here, if you have an external memory connected to the microcontroller, you can connect to it and program it. This button is to do a full chip erase. Here in the question mark, you have about, you can see the version that you're running. You have programmer user manual, programmer release, and system memory boot mode. In this window, you have the log. You can have either a lot of information or very little information. You can save the information or clear it. And lastly, you have the device information that you can see which device you're connected to, which type, the device ID, flash size, and the core. That's it for today. I hope you like it. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell to get notified when I have new videos. Thank you.